Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Right, so it's take two. Take two. Um, yeah. <laughs> Paul and I have just uh, started a chat there and uh, we never really got past the uh, initial initial um, introductions. But everyone, if you're watching, thanks very much for watching. This is Paul Joyce from the Chat Times and we're very thankful that he's, uh, he's here to have a chat with us. Paul, for, my first question for you actually is, um, it's a bit of a weird one. What is your profile picture all about on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it's shorthand for, for uh, mainly Liverpool and Everton, which is, which is what I do. I mainly cover Liverpool and Everton. So rather than um, a, pic, a, you know, a, a, a picture like other, of me, <laughs> nobody wants to see that. So I, 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 just, <laughs> took, I just took the, uh, the T-line shorthand of mainly Liverpool and Everton. Okay, so that makes so, sense now. It's something I that might we... update it one day. <laughs> no, that'll be shock. People won't be able to deal with yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Twitter will yeah. shut down. Um, we'll yeah. get to transfers a little bit later, but obviously you you follow Everton and Liverpool, obviously part of your job, and England as well, you told me, and obviously we're in the yeah. international break. What, um, what I w- wondered, obviously we're a Liverpool-centric podcast yeah. what, what I wondered was what have you made of the season to date basically um, and you know what have you what have you thought about from the summer did you believe that this was possible this sort of season probably not to the, to, to be in this situation now where you know where where the team is beginning April with the hope of winning four trophies um I think everybody was a little bit unsure of of what the the season could bring back in August um just based on what happened last season really with with the injuries and you know the difficulties that that the team had um I think they're probably the only person who 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 could look back and say with with honesty what that he envisaged the team getting back to the standards that it previously previously set was probably Jurgen Klopp because when mm. the the um you know when the team was on that run of you know six successive home defeats and he was having to to um deal with sort of downbeat negative questions on where the team w- was heading he he did say then that we will be all right once the crowds are back in the stadium and uh, when we have the players back so i think he can justifiably say um yeah i, I expected the team to be to be in a strong position this season and um, but to be going for you know the, in with a chance of the of the quadruple and it, it you know it's still going to be so difficult to pull off just given the relentless nature of the schedule that the team's facing and you know no no margin for any error in any of these games um i think it's you know testimony to the club that he, that he's built and and since he came in and um sometimes i think probably still don't give this team enough credit i know that might sound daft because everybody will think that that um you know we constantly you know write positive stuff about them but there's always been this argument, hasn't there? You know, you know, where does this team fit into the all-time great teams, and do they need to win more trophies to do that? But I do think that that this is a special Liverpool team, and the next few weeks will tell us just how special that they will be. They will become. Do they need to win 
multiple league titles to go down as one of the greatest ever. I'm not so sure now because what they're doing is remarkable in an age where, you know, you've got Manchester City, um, obviously greater resources and, and for Liverpool to be constantly pushing them and, and making it such an interesting season is is testament, as I said, to, to what Jürgen and FSG and the players and the backroom staff have created. Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with that. I, I, I think, as a Liverpool fan, I'm obviously very biased. Um, in this, just after the summer when the, the season was kicking off, Sky Sports, all their pundits produ- produced a, a prediction for the for the season. And I, I have to say, it, it, it got my back up a little bit because I could certainly see what we were going to do differently with a full, fully fit central defensive um, sort of structure. They were all very dismissive. It was all Liverpool might struggle to finish in fourth. There might have been one person. It might be Jamie Carragher who had us down a second, but everyone else dismissed us. Um, I'm just looking at some of the... I mean, I mean, obviously, we strengthened in that department with Canate, didn't we? I'm just yeah. looking at the, at the comments coming in, and there's a comment coming from Sailing Legend, and this is kind of relevant to what we're talking about. He's put, would you, if you went back to last summer knowing how the season has gone, is there a player that you would have bought to make the team even better? But I'm not sure that that would have even been possible. Maybe bringing Diaz in earlier might have been a thing. What do you think? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I mean, I think that I think the um, the unknown going into the season was how the injured players would react. I mean, for example, um, who would have you know, everybody sort of hoped that Virgil van Dijk would, would come back and play to the standard that he's played at. But the, the, there was obviously a little bit of unknown given the, the, the nature of the injury. Um, the fact that you had three players coming back from long-term injuries in, in such a key position, given what we saw last, last time, there was probably a little bit of... Um, hesitancy around what Liverpool could achieve. And I think if you go back to sort of um, the week, is it late October, early November, when you had the Brighton result and West yes. Ham result, when, when, yeah. when they gave away the two goals and then got beat by West Ham 3-2 the following week, I think if you'd asked, you know, if you'd have asked the question then, would Liverpool be in this position now? I think a lot of people would again probably be a bit sceptical. But I think that week was a massive turning point for in the season. Um, I think after the West Ham game, there was um, a bit of sort of introspection on, on how that the season had progressed since then. And if you look at the defensive record since then, which is as much as we go on about the the attacking side of the team and and that that is accept, exceptional when you look at the you know the three top leading goal scorers in the league I think with Ronaldo and and assists as well Liverpool top the league for for that with Trent uh, Andrew Robertson and Mo Salah as well but I think that the the forward strides that that the defense has made is probably underpinning what the club is looking to achieve now and and I think Nobody was really quite sure how that would be back in August, September. Would would the players um, all come back as good as they as good as they have done? And you know, Liverpool were were quite cute in that early period in terms of maybe rotating players a bit more. I think um, a lot of people have maybe focused on on, on Joel Matip and his. Um, ability to carry the ball out of defence. I think the biggest improvement in Joel Matip has been availability. I think he's played more games this season than he did play in the title winning season and last season. And it was funny, really, because I didn't really, you know, if you if you look back at the title winning season, I think Dejan Lovren played more than Joel Matip, certainly in the Premier League in, in that campaign. So I think. There were a number of unknowns that held you back from from thinking that maybe held you back on Liverpool a bit. If they all fell into place, I think then, yeah, 
everybody could see that the, that the team from what they did in the title winning season is an exceptional team and I think the recruitment since then has been very sort of savvy and targeted in specific areas as Liverpool have done sort of throughout Jurgen's reign so and and the hit rate of the of the signings has been exceptional again Jota you know Thiago the only problem with him would be availability again Diaz has hit the, the ground running Canati looks a really good player for the future yeah. at a really exceptional price again. So, yeah, I think there's a, been a lot of steps to get to this point and they've all fallen into place through, through whether it's hard work, the medical signings, dovetailing with the manager or, or, or clever recruitment once again. I think, I mean, just to pick you up on, on what you've said there, I think Liverpool felt that nervousness at the beginning of the season anyway, and that, that's actually proved by the fact that they kept Nat Phillips around. I mean, let, let's be honest, Canate coming, but there yeah, were, were actually yeah. almost injury doubts about Canate. He'd had a very patchy sort of 12 months with Leipzig, yeah. been in and out, not really played an awful lot, and people had a few doubts. Then, and then obviously we've got Matip, Gomez and, and Van Dijk. Um, so I think Liverpool felt Felt those ner- that nervousness yeah. as well, but it's certainly yeah. D- it it it's kind of if you had your perfect, what do you want to happen? What's the perfect scenario? I think we've actually got it, haven't we? Yeah, and, and I think the way that Virgil Van Dijk has, I mean, I think they they rotated him a little bit more in the early part of the season, but the way he sort of stepped up sort of week by week to the position where he's now and he, he looks to be back to his best. And, and I think something that we spoke to um, to Jürgen about sort of before the, the Carabao Cup final was that period just over a year ago now where, you know, there was no no crowds in grounds, the, the, the injuries were piling up. And I, and I think that, and he admitted that that, that period took a, a big toll on him. Um, I think if Virgil had suffered any kind of reaction to the injury, I think that would have been a, a big a big um, test of Jürgen in a way because um, he does rate him so highly and, and everybody can see the reasons for that. So as you said, Dan, I think there was that initially ner- nervousness and as the season's gone on, they've, they, they've got through that, come through that and, and now we're in this situation where, you know, anything is possible over the over the next coming six weeks and it, it's going to be, you know, probably as Jürgen would say, for people to enjoy the ride now and, and, and see where it takes takes the club. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, I mean, you mentioned, I wanted to know who you thought has been standout for the, the team this season. We mentioned Joel Matip the other day and obviously he's just took an award, probably yeah. the first time that he's ever won an award um, since he's come to England. Um, you know, with, with him, you know, Tell me what you think about his performances this season. But is there anyone else who's particularly stood out for you? Maybe someone who's not as obvious as um, yeah. you know Salah or, or or Mane. Yeah, as I said, I think the biggest thing with Joel is it has been availability, and and that's probably the the greatest quality that that a player can have that is overlooked in a, in a way. I mean, you look at if you were to list all Salah's strengths. The fact that he's available, you know, every single week, bar maybe what one or two each season, it is incredible t- testament to to how he looks after himself. And and I think Liverpool have, by and large, done that well with key key players. Um, you know, rec- recruited robust players, and that and that obviously you want you want your main players out on the pitch. So, I think Matip benefited that probably everybody looks at um, 
Virgil van Dijk and everybody looks at Trent and Robbo and and Andrew Andrew Robertson and they probably are slow to get on to to you know Joel Matip's attributes. But I remember the game at Leeds earlier on in the season when Liverpool won three 0 at Elland Road. I think he was very influential then, and and you saw that's another sort of part of e- of Liverpool's evolution as an attacking force. Yep. They want they want you know Pep Linders mm-hmm. talks about um, everybody on the pitch being able to play the final pass, and we saw that in the Brighton game when where Matip puts the ball through for, for Diaz's goal, and then you know he. he you know the other game where he where he scored a goal, so I think yeah he's he's probably getting some overdue credit. I think the other player for me, who I think he I think people recognise he's a good player, but I think Andrew Robertson's probably stepped up another level this season. Um, w- w- joined the. The sort of captains group, the leadership group in the in the summer when when Wijnaldum left, and I I just think he so often sort of sets the tone for Liverpool in matches. I think I remember the first Champions League game of the season against AC Milan at home, and and you know he was just sort of a a blur on the left side, you know, closing players down, and and I, and I think that so often Liverpool sort of. The tempo is set by Andrew Robertson, and you know we focus a lot on on his assists as, as well as Trent's assists. But I think both of them have, you know, we shouldn't ignore the defensive um, prowess as well, and how how important they are to, to the team from that from that point of view, not just their attacking output. So, I think Andrew Robertson would be one, maybe along with Matip, who who I've been impressed with this season. Again, another player who's there he, he, week in, week out, probably benefited a little bit more from um, the willingness to rotate with Costas this season, who, who's done well and at, at times. Um, but I think, you know, you've seen Robertson develop into a real leader. And, and um, yeah, I, I think he would he would be one I would pick out as as one of the players I've liked watching this season. I think the Joel Matip thing is <clears throat> you only have to look at the way Chelsea played us in the final and Tuchel definitely gave specific instruction as to with regards to stopping Matip doing bringing the ball out. I mean they they closed him down. They tried to stop that source to our front line because it's obviously something that we 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 see every week and we use yeah. it. It's the first time I'd actually seen someone make what I thought was a special provision to just, you know stop Joel Matic carrying the ball because that's good, that can hurt us. Um, I think you're right about Robbo. Robbo had that little injury at the beginning of the season, and I think he took a little while to get over that. I was listening on to podcasts and people were saying, "Oh, Robbo doesn't look the same," but I think that injury was probably worse than we realised. Um, could, so, but we're I, also I, holding them. We're, we're also holding them to a massively high standard as well, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, are we, yeah. Are we, and that's the that's the that's the sort of beauty of this team now. Um, you know, we we to to be expecting. We shouldn't really expect Andrew Robertson and, and Trent Alexander Arnold to be doing twenty assists each season. Because nobody else in the in the Premier League's really coming close to that, and yet and yet we do, and and they are, and and that's that's you know there's a lot to like about the team, isn't it? The way that they conduct themselves, the humbleness, the hunger, the way that they're constantly pushing themselves, and as you pointed out, then because of the standards that Liverpool have have um, attained. The opposition is, will now target maybe Matip and prevent him from doing that. So there's a there's maybe more pressure on Robertson and more pressure on Trent Alexander Arnold and more pressure on um, Virgil to bring the ball out in different ways and start attacks from the back. So these are all the little challenges. You know, I'm sure t- opposition teams that Liverpool have got coming up in this final segment of the season will be spending 
um, the international break, looking at ways to try and to try and stop them. In, in the same way that Liverpool will be looking to find little thing, little chinks in in Manchester City's sort yeah. of armour for for those two games. <clears throat> yeah, uh, coming up then, but that that's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But I, I do think you know probably as. And that was maybe the point I was making before about have I truly appreciated how good this this Liverpool team is? Maybe not in a strange way. Maybe you sort of hold them to a to a very high account, and sometimes I think you know you know, should maybe you don't have to cut them slack very often, but. You know, when they do have it, maybe a, a, a dip, maybe against Inter Milan, instead of over analysing that and saying, "Well, he wasn't good or he was poor tonight," maybe you just, you know, move on from that. Yeah, straight I think, away. I think uh, the contrast with Man City causes a problem because Man City yeah. are so good that Liverpool should be the standout team by a mile, but they yeah. can't. It can't be because City are that good, and that that probably skews our opinion because we're always chasing. We always feel yeah. like oh, we can't slip up, we can't do this, and what they're actually doing is, is superhuman almost. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, and, and that, that you know, and imagine if Liverpool weren't doing what they were doing, that the, the league would be over in yeah. March every year, wouldn't it? The, you know, there'd be no sort of intrigue to to a lot of this. And <laughs> excuse me, I think that's a point Jurgen has has raised himself that. Um, you know, almost be be thankful to what to what li- this Liverpool team is doing because um, if City weren't around, what what would they have won over the past mm. few years? It, you know, mm. certainly one more one more title at least. Yeah. Um, just before we move on to the summer, I just wanted wanted to get your thoughts on what we've now got ahead of us. It's, I mean, if you're a Liverpool fan, I would just urge you to just enjoy this I mean I know it's tense and I'm the worst yeah. person to watch football because I get really really upset about everything and I'm just on edge but you have to try and enjoy it what do you think is possible you know obviously we're in the three competitions I can't imagine that we will win all three we could ostensibly not win any but what do you think you know from your experience and the way you're seeing it from you, you, you know, your point of view. What do you think is possible? I it, it's so difficult to judge, isn't it? Because, as you rightly said, then the margin of there is no margin for yeah. error now. You, you, you can go from from being in with a chance of of another three trophies to a week later being out of the chance of winning anything. So it's very difficult to judge. Obviously the 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 league game at Manchester City is going to have a huge, huge bearing. I think the draw for the for the Champions League to be on that side of the draw without um you know disrespecting any of the any of the you know Benfica or, or you know maybe Bayern Munich. I think Liverpool should be confident of that route um the anfield factor and, and two legs is ob- is obviously massive um so it's very difficult to i, I you know i am going to probably sit on the fence because i don't want to say i don't want to say you know they, yeah yeah i don't want to say you know they can they can go and win all three because to add to the carabao cup because you look at the schedule and it there's so many Relentless. factors that are going to come into that. You know, if we go back to where we to talking about what we spoke about earlier about what this season would would hold. You know, we're, we're in a period now where if somebody picks up uh, an injury, they could miss three massively important games. So it, it's it's you need a bit of luck. It's very yeah, you do. You need a you need a little bit of luck. Um, but having said that, I think you know I go back to something that James Milner said in, in the Liverpool program recently, and and it was re- really sort of an illuminating 
comment from him. And he said that he felt that maybe Jurgen Klopp had been ground down by the events that we that we spoke about earlier last season. Um, but now there's a sort of a freshness to him and excitement to him and that he wouldn't want anybody else driving the club forward. And, and I think, you know, I revitalise Jurgen Klopp is a is a massive, you know, weapon for Liverpool over these coming weeks because he does, you know, everything does go start from him. He mm-hmm. he 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 drives everything, and um, I think he will privately think they've got a good chance of of going far in in. In all, in everything that they can do, I don't think he will fear any of the teams that Liverpool have got to play. Put mm-hmm. it that way. So it's um, yeah. Maybe ask me in uh, another month. We'll come back <laughs> in a month and we can have a better idea of where we are. Then I'm going to play devil's because, because it is it is going to change that quickly, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, you know. You know. It, 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 The, 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 I was looking back, and, and obviously two thousand, two thousand and one, when the the team won won three, the three cup competitions. That that schedule was was relentless as well. Um, the, the best players they. Sorry, I'm just. I, I it went a bit. The the um the connection went a bit patchy there, so I didn't. Hear yeah, you I think it was nice. Said. I was I was just going to play devil's advocate no, was there. Just, with, yeah, I was just going to play devil's advocate there. Sorry, um, with um Liverpool's form over the last few weeks, although they've won every game, has been a bit. It, it hasn't been the free flowing football that we've said they've ground out results. From your point of view, is that is that a worry? Or is it actually quite the opposite? It's brilliant because they found it, they're finding ways to win when they're not playing well. Or do they need to get back to playing? I'm, I'm not saying this is how I feel, but I'm just saying, is it a worry for you that they're grinding out yeah. results rather than playing well? I think you'd always want to be maybe a bit more fluency in, in, um, in the performances. I think grinding out wins is a, is a is a good habit to have, but I think it goes back to maybe one of the points you made before, and you, you recognised that, or you saw that Chelsea were maybe um, preventing Joel Matip from bringing the ball out of defence more, and and these are the challenges that they're going to face. That teams will will be trying to stop the fluency that that was was blowing sides sides away so again we can't expect Liverpool you know just to go out and do and blow every single team away I don't think that's that's going to be feasible in the in this run mm-hmm. um yeah I, 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 I yeah I'd, I'd, I'd take your point on the sort of the maybe the goals return hasn't been as um as eye-catching of late but I think that's where the defence has come into its own as well. I think it's is it um four so goals in the league since January. Yeah. Oh, is it yeah, four goals? Yeah. In, in January four January the second. In, in, in yeah, in in the in the league, no goals in the first half of games since the Chelsea game on January the second. So I think there's periods in the season where different parts of the team you maybe rely on those more than others and, and the key for the coach and staff and Jurgen Klopp will be to marry those two together in the in the running. Um, I think it helps that you know the teams that that they're playing. There's there's a lot of stake for the other teams as well, so um, that might make for in some cases open games, which which could help Liverpool. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think there has probably been a little bit of a. It, it, it's been more of a grind of late, but 
you know, they're still getting the wins, so that that's a good habit to have. No. Okay, let's um, let's move on to uh, the summer because a lot of people, when they watch this, will know you for being the 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 bloke who who usually breaks the big news first. Um, I certainly remember seeing. I mean, I, I don't know whether you know this, but I have you on my notifications on Twitter because I know that if you're saying something about Liverpool, it's normally something that I need to be hearing straight away. Um, so I'm just going to go through a few a few things. Um, Salah Salah's contract. Um, he's apparently stated today, um, or it's certainly news today, that Spain is not an option for him, and he's happy at Liverpool. And there was a story yesterday about him possibly Juventus being interested, and in, um, his agent saying that you know Juventus would be an option for him. What's what's your understanding of you the situation as we stand today? Um, I still think it's it's where we've been for most of the season, really. I mean, the talks have been going on for a long time. Um, no sort of breakthrough on on the horizon. Both sides sort of seem to be take sticking to their positions. Obviously, with all these things, it can just take one phone call and and that gets resolved. But um, I think Salah was always going to be the most complicated one because um, of how good a player he has now become in terms of one of the best in the Premier League. So obviously his um, representatives are going to look for uh, a salary which which reflects that. We all know that Liverpool's sort of um, policy um, on wages is 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 not like every other team, so I think that's going to that, be. Though, we've got the second highest wage bill in the league, though. <clears throat> yeah, but I think a lot of if you look at the wage bill um, this year compared to the uh, title winning season, I think it's come down quite a lot. And that's because a lot of the deals are, are in, incentivised, which is how they should be, to be honest. I think it should be, it's almost performance-related pay, whereby if, you, if, you, um, if you're winning trophies, the club will, will happily you know, pay the bonuses that, that, that go along with those. I think the so difficulty... Your basic, your basic stays around about the two, Let's say for the top players, your basic stays between like 230 and 250 a week, but you can earn up to 350, 400 a week if you achieve stuff. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if they're on those figures, but the, all the all the all the, the deals are at Liverpool are, are heavily incentivized. So I've not got it with me at the moment, but if you look at the the wage bill on the accounts for the last financial year, wages have decreased quite significantly. Uh, I mean, off the, I would like to say the figure off the top of my head, but it is quite a significant um, uh, significant reduction in a period where there was a lot of contract extensions. Yeah. And that shows you the level of incentives and bonuses that Liverpool pay when the team is successful. So the basic salaries may be lower than other teams. And, and I think that, you know, it, it's obviously a money issue because Salah has repeatedly said all season he's happy at Liverpool. Liverpool wanting to stay. But as yet, the two sides are, are apart on, on that val valuation. We saw the comments from his or, or the perceived emojis, the emojis that were perceived to be in relation to Jürgen's comments lately. Um, there doesn't seem to be um, a resolution imminent, but like all these things, it, it can change with with a phone call. You've also got on top of his uh, Firmino, Mane. Cater, Oxley Chamberlain, all all around the same, what is it now, 14, 15 months left. Mm. Um, James Milner, end of the season. Arigi, 
seems like AC Milan are yeah. keen to side him on a free transfer at the end of this season because his his deal was um, linked to appear. He has an option that's linked to appearances this season, so it doesn't look like that's going to get triggered. So there is a little bit of uncertainty. Um, but I think we've, we're already, and we have seen Liverpool sort of almost quietly evolving the squad. You know, people talk about them not doing a lot in the in the transfer market, but I think they've they've done very sort of shrewd signings. Canate's obviously a player for now and the future. There's obviously going to be an interest in Fabio Carvalho in the summer. Diaz. That was one of the ones that I was going to ask you about. Yeah. Have you heard anything about that one? Um, I think the I, I I think that comes back on the agenda in the summer. Right. Um, I, I would I would I could see that one getting done. I think the lengths that Liverpool went to in in January to try and get it over the line and and the loan back uh, made meant. That they, they ran out of time, but I could see that getting resurrected in the summer and no reason why that wouldn't go through. And then, obviously, Diaz was one that they were maybe looking at for the summer, but brought forward because of the Tottenham interest in the player. So, um, you know, that's almost a deal that, well, they, they have brought that one forward. So, when you look at the squad, you know, there's not. You know, going back to the question you said earlier, there's not many weaknesses in the in the squad. The, the average age is, or they've got they've got some young younger players in as well as as the older players. So I don't think we're going to see. You know, major coming major um, incomings this summer. Although a lot will depend on maybe outgoings. Okay. Well, you know, does Ox couple... want to stay and, and, and stuff like that? Yeah, there's been a couple of comments, so but I, I need to ask. So, um, Sean Pat said, great show as always, defibrillator ready for April. I, I totally agree with that. Feel, feel you get, make sure that you've got one for me as well. Um, Jurgen Klopp apparently is watching. Um, I'm not sure who that is, but um, sure. yeah, no, we've had a question from him and Sailing Legend both on YouTube. Just to ask, saying to ask for me to ask you about Jude Bellingham and Ch- to to Shamini, to Shimini. is that how you spell it? Um, Jude, really Jude had... Bellingham, I think, is complicated because of the price. Also complicated by the fact that. Um, it would seem that Dortmund could lose Haaland this summer. So would would they lose two key players in the same summer? I think there's no doubt that that Liverpool um that Jude Bellingham is of interest to a lot of a lot of clubs, but I think the price um I mean the last figure I saw quoted was a hundred million. You know that that doesn't strike me as a. I think that complicates interest in him, but also I think that the 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 Haaland situation. It, Dortmund usually sell one player per season, and and to lose two of the the big players, I'm not sure they would want to do that at the moment. And and the, the Haaland clause means that there's a lot of talk around him moving. We've seen in recent weeks Manchester City linked with him and. Real Madrid and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think that would be a complicated one. Mm-hmm. The the other midfielder, I mean, Jurgen Klopp just he's just um, chipped in as well. I I do know who that midfielder is. If you look, I actually did a post about it two days ago. Uh, I just couldn't pronounce his surname. Um, but yeah, the Monaco midfielder. Too. Monaco, yeah, yeah, he was in the French squad. Yeah, 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 yeah. To, to, um, to Anything there? Have you heard anything? No, not. I can't say I've heard anything on that one. To be honest, um, I think you know. You sort of look at the midfield, and there are maybe question marks there, aren't there? With with sort of Oxley Chamberlain and, and Cater, 
it's those three, isn't it? Milner, like Milner, Milner is, yeah. Milner is, is those three. Curtis yeah. Jones. Well, I think Curtis Jones has played really well. I think, uh, I mean, it, Jürgen seems to be selecting him more than most people um, would think that he would be selected. So that clearly shows the face that, that he has in him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it, we, we get back to what the point that we spoke about earlier about what we should expect off players. You know, people I think, should we expect Curtis Jones to come into the team and, and run the game when probably not? So I just think he might, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see what, what happens with 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 him this summer. I mean, Jürgen did say he'd had a chat with him recently. So, as you said, that that indicates that he's got a lot of faith with him, faith in him moving forward. So, he plays him in in high profile games as well. So, I think the thing is with Curtis, and I've said on a few, probably mistakenly said on a few podcasts, the Curtis that we saw as a kid playing in the under twenty threes used to run games, used to dribble past five people, throw it in the top corner. He was. A yeah. different Curtis to the one that we see in the first team. And I remember asking Kenny, funnily enough, are Liverpool trying to ease him in or are they are they trying to make him more disciplined? And that Kenny said, no, that he's just playing the way he feels he's, com- he, he's comfortable playing. It's not Liverpool. Liverpool will want to bring the best out of him, but they're certainly not trying to change who he is. But the one thing that I, I, I thought the other day, watching him playing in midfield, we all know that if our midfield lose the ball, our defence could be under serious, serious pressure. Yeah? One, yeah. one of the things that we can't do is give the ball away cheaply in midfield. So you throw 21-year-old Curtis Jones into our midfield and he is probably being drilled in, in, in them saying, you can't lose the ball in midfield. Be very careful with your passes. We want you to take risks, but take risks at the right time. So that is possibly the main result of the player that we're seeing now. He's not risk averse, but he's certainly not the player that we saw when he was playing with the kids, and he could basically try anything. No, yeah, and, and that that's the evolution of junior football into into men's football, isn't it? And and I think was it the Inter Milan game where he came, where Jurgen sent him on in the last few minutes. I think it was Inter Milan at home when obviously it was getting a bit nervy, and I, I think one of the. Um, Somebody I was at, at the game with somebody, and they they made the point that 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 sort of showed Jurgen's faith in him that, that he put him on in those. I'm pretty sure it was Inter Milan. He said it might only have been for uh, a couple of minutes, but that was obviously um, a reflection of the trust that 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 Klopp has in him. Um, I think I think the interesting thing is. Harvey Elliott's sort of progress as well. Um, and whether the pathways for the pathway remain put. But I think Curtis did well to, when Harvey came back up after his injury and was, and was um, getting selected. And then there was that period where Curtis wasn't getting into, into, a, into the match day squad. A little test of his. Temperament, and I think he, he he came he came back from that and was playing in in games, and you know that, that all the little t- that 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 maybe are sort of headline things, but these are the things that the players go through on a on a weekly basis. You know, being left out of squads and then coming in and having to contribute to all these. There's a responsibility of that and uh, there and, and and you know putting him on for the final minutes to close out the Inter Milan game was was a reflection of Jürgen's faith in him. Yeah, um, youth. Uh, we've been linked with a few players recently. There's a lad at Celtic, Ben Doak, and also I see that yesterday that we were linked with um, a kid called Trent Kone Doherty. Um, is that something that you're hearing that Liverpool are, are planning for the future? Obviously, they've done it in recent times with, you know, Harvey Elliott, and um, you know they brought some kids through like Tyler Morton and Connor Bradley. Is this something that you're hearing that Liverpool are looking to recruit for the future in this summer, and it won't be big signings? Um, well. 
Hello, Darren. Paul. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, mate. I just lost you there for a minute. It froze. Yeah. Did you did you hear my question? Um, there, yeah. Oh, um, I've got, yeah, just, just about... In, in, um, go on. Don't the sound. Yeah, I think I've got you back now. I'm just having some problems get with uh, with Paul Stream. He's um, I don't know whether I I mean he's freezing my end, but I I can't hear his audio either. Um, Paul, are you, are you are you there? Can you um can you hear me? Paul, do you want to go out the stream and come back in again? Yeah, Paul's gone, and then we're going to try and get him back. Just looking through the comments. Norman, good to see you, mate. Um, you're always on whenever. I really appreciate the support. Yeah, big fan of Coach Jones. Me too, mate. Me too. And he's learning. He, he, he's so young um, and he is, he's got a fabulous set of skills that, that, you know, we could be using in the future, but he, he seems to have the temperament as well. And he doesn't seem to be scared. And I, I genuinely think he's going through a very steep learning curve at the moment. Playing in armoured field is no barrel of laughs. It really isn't. And um, for him to, to adjust to that, having been a, <clears throat> a forward player and being the main man and the one that every, everyone looks to, um, I think that's a big adjustment. I think that's what we're seeing at the moment. Well, I've got no doubt that he's going to be a, a very, very good player for us. I really do. Um, what's going on here? Paul's just trying to get back in. Um, is it almost inevitable that Takumi and Origi move in the summer? I'll try and ask Paul that when I get him back. I think Origi, Origi's inev inevitable, but I don't think to Taki is. Um, he's certainly had some... Good performances this season. Here we go. We got Hello. Paul, we got you back. Hello. Ah, there we go. That's why I don't go on things. <laughs> Bless you. It's because you're living out in the in the country in a big mansion, is that what it is? And the internet's yeah, not very yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> just um, yeah. I was just going through some of the comments, Paul, and, and someone yeah. Someone has um, messaged, is it inevitable that Minamino and Origi will move in the summer? That's Jurgen Klopp who's messaged us on that as well. Is it, from, your, from your understanding, are they both going or just Origi? I think I think it's looking like Origi and AC Milan is a, is a credible link. Um, it's difficult to say on, on some of the fringe players, isn't it? Because until... until you know, offers come in for them. It's difficult, difficult to gauge Liverpool's reaction. I think it's interesting that um, Leeds were linked with Minamino in January, right? And Jesse Marsh, Jesse Marsh is now there. Who obviously had him at, at Salzburg, right? Where was was his manager? I think that's an interesting link. Um, I think he's actually, you know, in probably his best period as a Liverpool player, isn't he, at the moment? Yeah. In, in terms of very difficult circumstances in which he came in. Um, obviously, had the, the period on loan at Southampton as well. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think it, it's difficult to say with any degree of certainty, you know, which players are going to, leave because it will depend a lot on the the offers Liverpool receive and as we know Liverpool sell high yeah you know they've been what one of the the sort of um 
real pluses of, of the recruitment strategy is the ability to, to bring in big fees for players. Um, and that, you know, limits the number of teams that, that you'll be able to sell to. So I think there are question marks o- over a few players. A few players may may want more regular first team football, but, you know, th- there's also the flip side of that is leaving Liverpool at this time and, and the are you better getting... Um, you know, 20 games for Liverpool or a team that's going for all these all these trophies or, or do you want to play 35 games somewhere else? That That's yeah. going to be a very personal choice to, to, to some, some of the fringe players. Okay. But, um, yeah. What about, um, I'm going to throw a name at you, De, De Bala. He's uh, not going to sign a contract to Juventus. Anything at all in the link with Liverpool and the uh, is it Pablo Dybala? Yeah, Dybala. I mean, it's very... I've not Liverpool like a bargain, don't they? Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've not heard anything on that, to be honest. I mean, the, the, Liverpool are linked with so many players, aren't they, that, um, you know, the, 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 the forward options... Are, are strong at the moment. The, listen, it, it, it the contract situations with the, with the three, with Salah, Firmino, Mane, are going to dictate a lot of things. But I wouldn't be surprised if the, if some of the negotiations went into next season. Right. And we saw that with Genie with Alden. Um, you know, Liverpool aren't, aren't averse to holding players or, or letting players go into the final year of the contract. We saw that with Ch- Emre Chad. We've seen it with Gini Wijnaldum. Um, maybe that's a way football is, is going, not just Liverpool, but, but at other clubs as well, whereby, you know, we're going to see more, more people running down contracts and getting into the final years, a bit like Mbappe situation. Um, but the one thing you know with Liverpool is that they're always sort of, of um, have contingency plans and are always scouring the mark. And I think the Diaz signing is a perfect example of that. Not wanting to go in at sixty million, um, ruling that out. Maybe looking at it in the summer. Then a price gets set by Tottenham, and then they go in all over it and get the player and um you know that's where the obviously the Diaz link was one that was made for a for a long time but initially Liverpool weren't going to touch that deal at, at 60 million euros because they felt it was um too much money at, at that price to to play to pay a, a guaranteed fee. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that the Diaz deal is the perfect example of how the new cream work. Identify a good player, won't just pay silly money, but are prepared to, but are prepared to act if there is a change in the circumstances surrounding the deal, which happened when Tottenham established the price, and then mm-hmm. you know he he's done exceptionally well since he he came in, and I think there'll be a lot more to come from him as well. Yeah. In terms, um, of goals and, is, in terms of goals and assists. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with you, mate. Um, Norman has um, has messaged, do Liverpool have any interest in Declan Rice? Well, I saw an article on the back of the paper yesterday. Uh, I think there's a down 50 million for him, so... 150 no, million not, was not that? Not at the prices that... that, that um, 150 million was what West Ham were are suppo- supposedly looking for, for for Declan Rice. And um, no, I mean, it, it is interesting that everybody sort of sees the midfield areas. A lot of the questions here are Jude Bellingham, Declan Rice, 
I can't say that the Monaco <laughs> lads. Aurelian, let's just call him Aurelian. But Aurelian he, to yeah, but, he, but yeah, he, he's a young a young player, isn't he? Um, so Fabio it's interesting. Carvalho that, is a midfielder as well, isn't he? Yeah, so it's interesting. He's number that eight, too. Them, yeah, it's interesting that a lot of the the supporters sort of feel that midfield is an area where um, the, the strengthening maybe is required or could be required, and I think I'd probably go along with that. But again, it, you know, to West Ham, Declan Rice probably is worth you know, a hundred million pounds or a hundred and fifty million pounds it's what they're saying because he's key for them and they if they lose him, um then they have to replace him and and, and strengthen the team elsewhere, maybe find a different way of pools. Recruitment strategy would be to find the next De- Declan Rice yeah. or the you know, or the next player like that rather than rather than pay the full the full fee fee now. I mean, obviously, we've seen them do that. We, we've we've seen that they're prepared to pay a fee when needs be with with Van Dijk and, and Allison. But I think the strategy is still: can we unearth the next player rather than paying top dollar now? Yep. And Someone's just met- no. That's a strategy. Sorry. That's a strategy that's served them. them very well. Yeah. Um, just finally, is there any updates on Naby Keita's and Trent's injuries? <clears throat> um, not sure on Naby. I think Trent was targeting the Manchester City game in the in the Premier League um, for his comeback. So that would effectively be about three weeks out, I think. Okay. Um, so, I think Watford. The initial the initial uh, suggestion was that Watford would come too early, probably Benfica as well in the first leg of the quarter final. But that uh, the Manchester City game in the in the Etihad was a was a target he was hoping to be back for, and um, yeah, that's going to be you know that's. We spoke earlier about the sort of what can Liverpool achieve and as you said you need a little bit of luck and there's all these factors like injuries that are going to come into this this run now and, and obviously having Trent available for that game would be a, a massive boost. <laughs> well, lovely stuff, Paul. I really, but, but really... As we, but, but as we said as well, I don't think Liverpool will take risks with his fitness because... If you do have a little setback, then yeah, you're then missing four or five games, aren't you? They won't risk four or five games just just to be in one, uh, just to make sure he's available for one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so So Paul, thank you very much. It's been a bit glitchy, hasn't it? Backwards and forwards. I'm really sorry about that. Um, But I really do appreciate your time. And it's been absolutely fascinating uh, talking to you. And, um, you know, I hope, Hope to, uh, no to speak to you again. Uh, no and hopefully the, the stream will be slightly better the second time. Yeah. Um, speak. Yeah. Okay, mate. Um, if you're watching this on Twitter, yeah. don't forget to follow the page. If you're watching it on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and hit the like button of this video. Paul, thank you very much, mate. Appreciate your time. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.